In this video, we're going to continue with uh, making updates to our uh, Rails application. Uh, in this go, uh, we are going to create a new model uh, using the Rails Generate Scaffold. Uh, and then we're going to uh, uh, attach the model. Uh, so as we create instances of this model, um, we're going to attach or associate the data um, for the model to a specific user. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'm kind of going to go old school with this and just have um, a link to the uh, um, to an index for um, for a user, the the ID or the the primary key for the user. Um, and have that then end up being related to the instances of this model that we're going to create. Um, and then um, follow that up, we'll then be able to run queries based on the, uh, based on that ID to be able to get specific uh, uh, data elements um, um, you know, for the model uh, associated to the user. So that as a different user's login, we, we get different uh, different objects. All right, so I'm going to start off with doing a Rails generate. Actually, one of the things that you can do is also not type all generate with CG. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you do. And I'm going to call my um, new object course. I want to be able to have courses um, that are associated to a user. So if I have, for instance, a portfolio that I'm creating, then this is a way for users to say, hey, these are all the courses that I'm taking. Um, I'm going to use that one thing I was just talking about. I'm going to identify an owner of the index, um, course number um, with um, string and just course name. I don't need to go too far with this. There could be other things like course and semester of the year and credit hours, that kind of thing. Actually, I'll probably leave that as an exercise for, for you to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and run that. And that's generated uh, um, everything for this model, the views, and everything else, um, just like we would expect. So, um, so that's the first piece. I, I need to I need to refresh the screen. Um, so, what I'm going to do next is uh, I want to make a modification to the uh, to the table that was created for this and. Um, it, well, actually, not a modification table, but a modification to the view for this course. So, if we look at the courses views, there's this form that was created, and you'll see that there is a field that's listed up here for the owner, and I don't want to have this field be something that the user types in, but rather I want to grab this field from the current user. So who is the current user that's creating this? And so I can, I'm going to do this um, in two ways. First of all, I'm going to change this field to, first of all, get rid of the label, because we don't need that. I'm going to make this a hidden field. And I'm going to say user ID as that hidden field. And then I'm going to provide a value that maps to the current user and that user's ID. Okay. So this just ensures that, well, first of all, the, the user shouldn't be typing this in. Um, the ownership is determined by who they are. And so I shouldn't be able to provide an arbitrary user ID for a user. So I'm going to use this. Uh, we saw current user ID last time. 
had added that to um, this uh, uh, when we were looking for who the user is. And so I'm using that again here in the form. And it is a global variable, so you can use it pretty much anywhere. Um, everything else is going to stay the same, so as yes, they enter in what their course number is and what the course that they took. Um, so anyway, so that's the, uh, that's the first part. Um, the second thing is that I can now modify um, what's displayed here for page two. Uh, I think I'll leave that to the, the next video. Uh, where we'll basically display, you know, these are all the courses that were um, uh, that were entered by the user. But uh, I think I must stick with this. Uh, just keep this one, this video short. So we created the scaffold, um, and we've modified the form so that when we enter a new item into the database, it's associated to the current user. Um, actually, let's run this, and then we'll go into the database. We'll take a look in, in the database to see those changes. So we're still running, but I'm going <coughs> to stop this and restart it. And um, I should probably... Let's see... Yeah, I haven't run the migration or anything like that. Yeah. So, so me. So I'm going to do Rails DB migrate. Get that pushed into the database. Okay. And now let's run it. to do that, okay, Rails, uh, where's that, it's NT, okay, so now that's running, um, I didn't actually give us a link to the be able to add that's route. to add any of those courses. So those aren't actually here it is. So new course path. Um, let me try courses new. Yeah, so there's our there's our form, and I can create a course. And actually, this owner what is that listed there? Oh, I see. There's new. This new form. Did I? See? fail to save this. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so um, so now I have my course uh, and course name and let me just let me just put one in here. Um, CSC 3100 and programming create that course. There and actually, if I do just courses, should list that course there, right? Um, Owner is currently displayed. Let's see what happens here. I want to go. I'm going to take a look in the database to see whether or not that table is there. Um, should be. Um, so. TV. And it's the tables. So there's courses. Select courses. Uh, 
have not done something correctly with the owner, which is one of the main things I wanted to get done here. So obviously we need to fix something in the form. So in field, here's my problem. It should be owner. User ID. Okay. Now let's try it. And I'm going to destroy this one here. No, I'm not running anything. Is it 180? It is 80. Where is it? Um, There's courses. I want to create a new course again. Okay, created a course. The owner is one. Okay, so that's that's exactly what I wanted. Let's take a look at the list of courses. There it is. Okay, and then in the database, it should display the same thing. Um, just select courses. Okay, there it is. So owner. Uh, let's do one more thing. And I'm gonna log out and I'm going to log in as Jane Doe. If I can remember Jane's password. And let's go to actually. So we'll see there. That's that's Jane instead of John. And let's do a list of all courses. So that should all show all the courses. Um, actually, I haven't actually done anything to protect um, Jane from seeing anything. But let me have Jane create a course. Um, let's say that Jane's taken. CSE 1200. Uh, I don't know if I remember the name of the course. Crow to computer computing. Okay. And the list of courses. So each of them has uh, different courses that they've uh, they've created. So in the next video, what we'll do is when we get to page two, we're going to display just the courses that Jane created. Um, through a query and the same thing with John. So anyway, thanks for bearing with me um, uh, through a couple of those errors, but I think we have it all sorted. Um, so in the next video, we're going to do a query based on uh, who the current user is and display that user's owned courses um, on page two.